next meeting to order. Everybody stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, take the roll. O'Connor. Here. Morissette? Here. Alms? Here. Bazell? Bazeal? Yep. Bazeal? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Weber? Here. Atkins Hoggett? Here. Hall? Here. Excellent. Everybody notice that we have a new <laughs> clerk here? <laughs> you want to introduce Welcome yourself? Aboard. Thank you. I'm Becky Egan and I'm from Baldwin. I worked for the village of Baldwin as their deputy clerk for eight and a half, the last eight and a half years. So happy to be here. Glad to happy have you here. Have you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we got a couple presentations, a few actually. Uh, you know, before we get into that, one thing that I would like to say is that I'd like to acknowledge that today is uh, uh, the celebration of Martin Luther King birthday holiday. And uh, that's something that we will be discussing a little bit further down the agenda, but I, I, I wanted to acknowledge that as we start our meeting tonight. All right, so the first proclamation that we have is for Mentor Day, and I believe we might have someone here that wanted to quick speak on that before. Yeah. If you come up, please. Straight here. Yeah, perfect, thank you. Yeah, so I'm, my name is Nate Shore, and I'm with Big Brothers Big Sisters. Uh, we're a mentoring agency. Um, across the country, but we have, uh, I represent Big Brothers Big Sisters here in the St. Croix Valley, and so the proclamation that we have today is just in honor of National Mentoring Month, and as someone who lives in this community and works in this community, um, and working with both our, our mentors and the children facing adversity that they do mentor, um, I just want to say thank you for, you know, looking at this proclamation and just seeing, you know, the more that people talk about what we do and appreciate what we do, um, it really does breathe life into what we do. So thank you for acknowledging it and thank you uh, for giving us the time. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll read the proclamation then. So um, whereas every child deserves to achieve success in life and whereas mentoring through big brothers, big sisters of Northwestern Wisconsin provides children facing adversity with strong and enduring professionally supported relationships that change their lives for the better forever and Whereas children with a mentor set higher goals for themselves, and whereas children with a mentor are less likely to use drugs and alcohol, and whereas children with a mentor are more likely to reach higher levels of education, and whereas each year hundreds of caring adult volunteers adults volunteer their time to better the lives of children in our community as mentors. And whereas 2020 marks the 19th year celebrating January as National Mentoring Month, and now therefore, on behalf of Mayor Rich O'Connor in the city of Hudson, and on behalf of the entire city council and the citizens of Hudson, we do hereby proclaim January 30th, 2020 as Big Brothers, Big Sisters, thank, you, uh, thank Your Mentor Day, and urge everyone in Hudson to thank their mentors and those who have made a positive impact on them while growing up. Cool. Next one, Bird City Proclamation. And I don't know if anybody's here to talk on that one. All right, I'll just read that one then. Uh, World Migratory Bird Day. Whereas migratory birds are some of the most beautiful and easily observed wildlife that share our communities, and whereas many citizens recognize and welcome migratory songbirds as symbolic harbingers of spring, and whereas these migrant species also play an important economic role in our community, controlling insects, pests, and generating millions in recreational dollars statewide, and whereas migratory birds and their habitats are declining throughout the Americas, facing a growing number of threats on their migration routes and in both their summer and winter homes, and where Whereas public awareness and concern are crucial components of migratory bird conservation, and whereas citizens enthusiastic about birds, informed about the threats they face, and empowered to help address those threats can directly contribute to maintaining a healthy bird population, and whereas since 1993, World Migratory Bird Day, WMBD, has become a primary vehicle for focusing public attention on the nearly 350 species that travel between nesting habitats in our communities and throughout North America and their wintering grounds in South and Central America, Mexico, the Caribbean, and the southern U.S., and whereas hundreds of thousands of people will observe WMBD gathering in town squares, community centers, schools, parks, nature centers, and wildlife refuges to learn about birds, take actions to conserve them, and to simply have fun, and whereas WMBD officially is held each year on the second Saturday in May, 
Its observance is not limited to a single day, and planners are encouraged to schedule activities on the dates best suited to the presence of both migrant and celebrants. And whereas WMBD is not only a day to foster appreciation for wild bird days and to celebrate and support migratory bird conservation, <coughs> but also a call to action. Now, therefore, I, on behalf of Mayor Rich O'Connor in the city of Hudson, Wisconsin, do hereby proclaim May 9th, 2020, as World Migratory Bird Day. You're a little early on that one. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'm not sure who's doing the safe routes to school, Mike. All right. Do I need to sign up? Good evening, Mayor, Council. Mike. Um, Michael Mraz, Director of Public Works for the City of Hudson. Uh, here tonight to do a, a brief presentation on the Safe Routes to School project that has been in motion for the last uh, two, three years. Uh, but before I begin and kind of get into the nitty gritty of, of the projects, I just want to invite Tim Erickson here. He's representing the School District of Hudson. He'd like to say a few words to the council tonight uh, before I begin. So Tim, if, if you'd like to step on up to the podium. <laughs> Good evening. Um, pleased to be here tonight. Thanks for uh, for considering the projects tonight. I think uh, this is, these projects are going to be uh, great improvements for safety for for students as well as other members of the public, uh, bicyclists, pedestrians. Um, and Mike will uh, go through those projects in some detail. I know some of you are are familiar with the projects. Um, it's also a great uh, a great way to start out because. Uh, it's the, di the school district and the city cooperating together. Uh, I just want to thank city staff um, uh, for working with, uh, with us as we looked at the different projects and different options out there. Um, as Mike mentioned, uh, there was a Safe Routes to Schools study done, and uh, that study was finalized in 2018, and uh, we looked at some of those projects as well as some of other, other uh, city projects and uh, the TAP funding will provide, a, provide an 80% funding uh, grant. So uh, it's, a, it's a competitive grant, so there's no guarantee that we get it, but I think it's great that we're able to work together and start to apply for this grant together uh, upon your approval. So we do have full, full support of our school board. They had the same information last Monday, and so I uh, just appreciate your consideration of this. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Dean Chamberlain and I were able to go out to the school board meeting last week Monday and present the same information and they asked us questions about the project so on and so forth so and then we presented at public works and public safety um, kind of the projects that we're proposing but uh, let's just kind of go through the list here uh, starting you know these like Tim said you know the Safe Route School plan was developed um, and staff from the city and the school just both met kind of came up with a priority list based upon calls that I've received into the Public Works office and things that they've heard back. Um, and we've kind of made a list of top 10 and we met and we kind of went through them and kind of came to consensus on a, a dollar amount that we wanted to, to kind of aim for. It's a $300,000 minimum grant to apply for, so we had to come up with projects that exceeded that number. Um, and these are the projects that we landed on. Uh, obviously, I'll address some some other projects that came up in public safety and kind of why they didn't make the list and I'll cover that later. First one is the middle school, uh, Hudson Prairie. Uh, projects out there are dynamic speed signs on both the north and south end of the middle school. Um, you know, coming north on Carmichael, it's 45, 40 miles an hour. People are flying to go through the intersection by, uh, you know, the Atwood annexation and they continue to go that speed through the middle school zone. So to put a, uh, dynamic speed sign on the south end there and then on the opposite way coming into town put a dynamic speed sign there as well. Uh, there is a trail crossing there um, and we're looking to do some rectangular rapid flashing beacons there. The trail goes behind the YMCA and comes out on Carmichael and crosses the road. Um, they're not in ADA compliance. The, the pedestrian ramps would be upgraded, uh, crosswalk striping, and then the signs there. And then we're also looking at extending the sidewalk on the west side of Carmichael from that trail up to Burrow Oak where there is a four-way stop, a controlled intersection, and the school district does have stopping guards there. So if there is a student that isn't comfortable crossing that trail crossing, they can walk the sidewalk up to the four-way stop, use the crossing guards, and cross there. So that's kind of, that's, that's number one. Number two is uh, EP Rock sidewalks. So from 11th Street all the way up to 17th Street, besides some partial sidewalks on the school property, there are not, no sidewalks along um, summer. So 
you know, from what I've seen and what, you know, I've received is, you know, you see kids walking on the, on the shoulder, the boulevards, when there's plowed snow, they're out, out in the road type of thing. So just to incorporate some sidewalks, because on 17th Street, there actually is a sidewalk that runs along 17th Street, and we actually have a crossing on summer with rectangular rapid flashing beacons, so a lot of students cross there. They get across the road on the summer, and then they got no place to grow in there walking on the shoulder. So that was identified in the plan, and we thought that was a good, good uh, section to tackle. Um, obviously, the plan identified a lot of sidewalks in that neighborhood, and that's something that uh, we see in a lot of the older parts of Hudson is the lack of sidewalks for students, so on and so forth, around our schools. Um, and it's something that we'll continue to address in the future, but this is kind of the first step towards going, getting there. Uh, the third thing, Before you move on yeah. There, I ask, mm -hmm. have you talked to the neighbors that will be impacted by having a new sidewalk in there? Not yet. Okay. No. I just want to. Yeah, we will. <laughs> so, you know, when, if and when we do receive the grant, we will definitely reach out to those neighbors and come up with a, what side we're going to go on, which one makes sense. We kind of, you know, Dean has, our city engineer has an idea of what side he'd like to see those on. But before we go or do anything with breaking ground or anything like that, we're definitely going to be in communication with the Thank property you. owners. Yes. <laughs> uh, third project is the uh, medians on Vine Street. And this is kind of incorporates the Vine Street pedestrian safety study. Um, and that's, that's later on in the consent agenda. But um, SCH performed a safety, pedestrian safety study for the city. And out of that came recommendations to install median islands along Vine Street at Bella Rose, Diamond Drive, Grandview, Spruce, uh, as well as a couple other things. Um, but for this project, for this TAP grant, we're looking to apply for monies to actually install those pedestrian medians, which will allow students to be able to cross half, half a vine, look both direct, you know, look one direction, cross the other half. And then at Diamond Drive, where we're having a lot of issues with the YMCA, we'll install rectangular rapid flashing beacon in the actual median. Uh, right now there's two on the outside, but if we get to the median island, we would put one there as well um, and really light up that intersection and make that safe place to cross. So um, that came out of that study and that's why it's in this project. And then finally, just uh, uh, the high school, I was looking to do some, some lighting on the rear side of the high school off of Fillmore Hill. Um, and Maple, um, you know, just some, to light some, some trail and sidewalks on the school property. Uh, two projects that were discussed at Public Safety that have been omitted from this are the striping on Oak Street and Maple and Chestnut and uh, wrap the dynamic speed sign on Bear Drive coming into town by the railroad pretzel. And the reason being is we reviewed the application and even if we were to get accepted, we can't start construction until 2023. So seeing that these, the projects that were discussed at public safety were higher importance and we'll probably look at funding that through our operating or something along that lines where we can get those projects done this, this say, spring. Say that again, what so which one didn't? The uh, dynamic speed sign on Burr Oak, or not Burr Oak, Bear Drive yeah. by the railroad trestle. We had a couple of, of residents out there that came in, and, and that was one of the things that was discussed as far as putting one up there. And then uh, some striping, some pedestrian striping on Oak Street, Chestnut, and Maple, just for some temporary pedestrian accommodations for students behind the high school to kind of delineate. Because, you know, we're looking at with Oak Street, if we're going to put some sidewalks on Oak Street or something like that, we're going to look at redoing or reconstructing that entire road because it's, in, it's a rural cross section right now. So we'd be looking at curb and gutter, storm water. You know, it's a big project. So it's to, just to do a temporary pedestrian accommodation, we would look at doing some, some striping up there. So those were the two projects that we were admitted that we talked about. So just want to make clear that. So these are the projects. Um, you know, if, if the council feels that these are good projects, you know, the staff, direct staff to apply for the grant. The grant is due on the 24th of January. So Dean and I, with the help from the school district, will put together the grant application in-house and then submit it and cross our fingers. So um, any questions? I'm here, Dean's here, Tim's here. So that's why we brought it forth. I, uh, you know, I got one quick question, maybe executive summary on it. You know, for years, we've never had sidewalks up by EP Rock. What's changed so much? You can't tell me more people because the, the school can only handle so many students. Mm -hmm. So now why do we need... The neighbors up there never requested it. Correct, correct. I guess from you know a public safety standpoint, 
when you see kids, elementary school kids, walking on the shoulders, um, especially in the winter time when a lot of snow, you know, gets out in the shoulders, and then the kids are walking in the street because that's what's clear. You see cars looping around them. It's just from a public safety standpoint for the safety of the students getting to the school. It was identified in the Safe Routes to School plan, and they said to start installing sidewalks around our elementary schools. So we're following the plan, what was identified. Okay. Two, two questions, Mike. One is, and I think you might have said this, we don't know what side east or west on um, Summer Street those would correct. be. Is that correct? Correct. Yep. Okay. And then the second question is, of the, so it's estimated as a $46,000 for those sidewalks from 11th to 17th. Mm -hmm. City um, share, yep. I'm sorry, the portion the city would pay because yep. I don't know if you said it's an 80-20 grant, right? Yep. So, yep. which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, just a question on um, the current sidewalk policy in terms of is it is it 100 percent on the residents or is there some kind of way the city splits out with the residents? So, our current assessment policy is 100 percent assessed to the property owner for new installation of sidewalks. Seeing that this would be grant funded, we would be able to, you know somehow we'd have to do some calculations on what their percentage would be because we I don't want to assess them 100% seeing that the city is getting grant money to install these sidewalks so it would be a a, a portion of yeah, our share not. you know so okay yeah are you on that street we'll charge you <laughs> <laughs> those, those are those are my people so to speak so I'm, I'm asking <laughs> Yeah. You know, that's, you know, to be honest, that, that assessment policy is, it's old. I mean, I think it was last looked at late 80s, maybe it was well, we updated just, in we 2012. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, the language in there with sidewalks is 100% accessible to the property owner for new installation. So I know the city has had a hard time installing sidewalks in the city because of that, because property owner doesn't want to, a pay for the new installation and have to maintain them shovel them so on and so forth so you know as we move forward that's one thing that we may want to revisit uh depending upon you know the thoughts of the public works committee and council at the time but you know something to keep in the back of your head i have a couple questions on timing so this is due to them by the 25th 24th 24th yep. when do you expect to hear back i mean do they have any kind of line of sight um, i didn't see april I this think we've got a there's a resolution that needs to come okay. from the sponsoring organization by, it needs to be, to be to them by April 17th. Gotcha. So, so this spring, quick. yeah, this yep. spring. And then you wouldn't be able to start work on anything until... Well, that's, you know, we'll have to contact them. We may be able to, if we want to front the whole cost, but we won't be able to collect any, any monies back until 2023. But Because they, they already have projects in the queue that they're already funding for the next couple of years, right? So they don't have the monies actually available till 2023. Gotcha. You said earlier that you wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to do anything until 2023 or something. Maybe I misheard you. I did you. say that, yeah. But I mean, we could but we could front the money. We could if, front the whole project okay. and mm. then just wait till 2023 and get it reimbursed. Well, the school district could front it first. <laughs> and then... There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just a comment. I love that the district and the city are working. I think that's. I, I commend you guys for working together on this so I would move at this time or motion at this time to uh, uh, to direct city staff to submit a joint tap grant application with the school district second I don't think we have it uh, yeah we're, we don't have this no, for presentation. it's just a presentation good thought though Do what's that need action tonight? we don't have it down for action I guess I just oh, we want don't? general consensus oh, from the council That's to move forward with the Go grant ahead. application Okay, you don't need anything formal resolution or anything? No, like not, not at this time, no. Okay. okay. All right. That's I would fine. formally withdraw the motion. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> As advised. Thank you. Informally, well, in, in I certainly okay. support the application. Okay, there we yeah. go. Same here. Perfect. Okay, that's what I needed. <laughs> All right. Cheers. Thank you. Nice show. Thanks, Thanks, Thank you. All right, public hearings. Public hearing for an amendment to mun Municipal Code Chapter 255-75.2. <laughs> Breweries, brew pubs, wineries, and distilleries. Is there opportunity for anybody to? Did you have something nope, to say? Nice. To, opportunity for anybody to make a comment on this. Are there any comments? Are there any comments? Are there any comments? Move to close the hearing. Second. Motion and second to close the public hearing. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed, motions approved, public hearings closed. Discussion of possible action on ordinance 02-20 to amend municipal code chapter 255-75.2 breweries, brew pubs, wineries, and distilleries. Move to suspend. Second. Motion second to suspend the rules. Roll call. O'Connor. I, no, okay. I don't think I vote on <laughs> no, this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't remember doing that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need roll call unless it's a tie. Yeah. Yeah. So no roll call? No roll, no roll call, call, but no mayor. Okay. Morissette? Yes. Alms? Yes. Dizel? Dizel? Yes. Dizel? I'll get it right one of these times. <laughs> Even a real one. Yeah, you got the vote. <laughs> Whatever. Yes. Atkins Hoggart? Yes. Hall? Yes. You got to vote on something. Yeah, well, it's, it's <laughs> taken away. Move to adopt resolution or ordinance 02-20. Second. Motion second to adopt. Discussion? No discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. Public hearing for an amendment to Municipal Code Chapter 255, zoning to include short-term home rentals and an amendment to Municipal Code Chapter 140, housing standards to update the definition and requirements for rooming houses. David. Good evening. <clears throat> this is just an opportunity to introduce uh, this draft language to, to those of you that haven't seen it. And then I do know that there is uh, at least one person in the audience tonight that wants to speak on the subject matter. Uh, the details uh, are still still in, in the works. Uh, we have a little ways yet to go before we can uh, adopt yeah, an ordinance. Um, but at this time, I guess I'll turn it over to any comments uh, we might receive or, or questions that you might have. We'll All right. have the so, public hearing first. Right. Yeah. So um, this is your opportunity for anybody to comment on this. Are there any comments? Yep, come on up. Good to see you again. Hi, uh, my name is Matt Mackey. I live at 1101 Second Street. Um, I was here during the last meeting um, in regards to 1031 Second Street, which I live right next door to. Um, I've uh, the reason I'm here is I've talked with David quite a bit about the new rules, and I just want to make sure that before these are adopted, that a few things are addressed. Um, the week after you guys passed the rule that he could not be zoned for more than single family, um, there was another, not party per se, but six people drinking at one o'clock in the morning and this sort of thing. And I was just like, you gotta be kidding me. And the following day, which was Monday, I'm sorry, two days later, I called David and he said, just hold on, we're adopting rules. And that's why I'm here now. I guess my, my one question I have is, as a homeowner living next to a home that very possibly will have these rules, how are noise complaints going to be addressed? Mm -hmm. um, in the past, I've called the police, and the police will tell me there's nothing we can do. You know, it's the middle of the day. There's no law against 25 people sitting in the front yard. The current rules it stands says that you can have two people per bedroom plus one, which would put the house next door to me at 11 people. Many of the parties, including bachelorette parties, bachelor parties, small wedding parties, have all been that size or even a little bit smaller. And again, I'm being woken up at 12, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning by all of the noise. So I just want that part of it addressed. Um, I also want to just be clarified on property damage. Um, we've had cars drive over flower beds in our yard. I had a guy back a boat trailer into my yard and you know make ruts from the trailer how is that going to be affected as far as this new rule like who would i as a homeowner living next door to this who do i contact in this case or what what process do i follow another thing that i did a lot of research on is property value um, homes around these areas lose value if it's a house for example in breezy point or down in florida where it might be a condominium People expect these to be rented. You know, I personally have rented them myself going to Breezy Point or Florida. But when you take a home that's in the middle of a residential district and now turn it into basically a, a small hotel, all the homes that are around that are affected. And a lot of states are now requiring disclosure if you sell your house, and Wisconsin is exploring this, 
of the neighbors. In this case, you would have to disclose that this home is now a rented property for Airbnb. Um, so I would like that addressed. Um, also, I, I know that the maximum occupants is listed as 11 per se per the size of the house. To me, that again seems to be too much, only because, not that I'm, I'm trying to shut him down or anything else, it's just after living with this for four years, I, I come to you guys with first-hand knowledge. I've been woken up a hundred times from people locking their car doors at 1.30 after bar closes to you know, people walking down the sidewalks drunk coming home from downtown. Um, I just want to have that addressed too. You know, is it really right to say that a home can have 11 people, you don't know who they are, I have no idea where these people come from, um, you know, they come from Florida, Texas. I mean, they're, they're from all over the place. They're parking in front and back and say, so my question there is, is it really necessary to allow that? I think if, if we are, I just want to make sure as a homeowner before these are adopted that I'm protected too, not just the person. And I also researched the laws for the state Airbnbs and cities are allowed to adopt changes, but they are not allowed to ban people from running Airbnbs. But I don't think that, in my case, you know, and I'm only speaking for myself because I'm not too familiar with other homes in the area, but I don't think the size of the house should dictate what the neighbors have to, to live with. Um, I just don't think that's fair. I mean, that would mean that I could buy a house next door to any person in this room, put a three bedroom addition on it, and now I've got myself a small hotel that I'm renting for $500 a night. And how does that affect everybody around. I guess that's my big concern is I just want to make sure that if these laws pass as a homeowner of Hudson for 21 years, you know, this Airbnb has been open four years, it's really affected our well-being and I just want to make sure that all that stuff's addressed. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Any other comments? <coughs> any other comments? Move to close the public hearing. Second. Motion second to close the public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is approved. Public hearing is closed. David, did you have anything else you wanted to say? Or? Um, well, I guess you know, right now we, we don't have any rules on the books. So we're, you know, we're looking to adopt these as quickly as we can, uh, but we don't want to, you know, we want to get them right the first time. And with Kathy's help, we'll, we'll keep working at it. Yeah. The, the intent tonight was really to get public input, yeah. take it back to the Planning Commission, work with the Planning Commission staff and Kathy to hammer out a, yes, a, a like final this. ordinance update and then that'll go through the planning commission process come back to the council for a final hearing and adoption sort of thing but tonight was more let's get the input we can from citizens at this level get it back to planning let everybody mm -hmm. work out the details so yeah okay now I uh, I actually re read through the ordinance and what I wish is boy I need a chart because I cannot yeah. make sense out of you know that there's so so many variables in there what what is allowed and I think particularly, I noticed we had an event limitation in there, which is was good. Mm -hmm. But in the case of uh, um, of Matt, you've already got 11 people in there. You can have three more people. You, you know, you've got 14 people having, and that's 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 a party. That's not, <laughs> you know. So it's it's an issue in a residential area. So I particularly understand uh, that concern, and we really need to figure out how to how we're going to deal with that and how we're going to enforce it. Right. Yeah, should not be on the. the yeah, the enforcement will be a big part. I know that was Correct. that yeah. was one of the questions. So it's not just going to be a call the PD for a violation. It's also let the city zoning staff know because then it, it also becomes a, an ordinance violation where we have a different That's, process we can follow, which ultimately can lead to the revocation of the license. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with that, but I also am very aware that we're kind of staff short on enforcing a lot of our our ordinances. So that's an issue everywhere we look. All these things that we pass, and we don't have people to to be, to spare to go and, and really take action in the way it's supposed to happen. You know, so let's, let's just be careful and not build something that we can't take care of, right. or let's take care of the things that we should be taking care of. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, David. All right. Moving on, uh, this portion of the agenda for comments and suggestions from citizens <laughs> present. Uh, keep it short, please, and not uh, don't, do not address anything that might be on the agenda farther down. Um, is there anyone that has a comment? Anyone that has a comment? Anyone that has a comment? 
Hearing no comments, we'll close that portion of the agenda. Consent agenda. Approve the meeting minutes from January 6, 2020, regular council meeting. Approve the claims in the amount of $5,971,103.85. Approve the regular operator's license applications as listed on the issue sheet. Approve the Vine Street pedestrian safety study. Approve the purchase of a license plate reader for the police squad. Approve the adoption of the stop and yield sign policy. Introduction of Resolution 1-20 and setting a public hearing date of February 24th, 2020 to amend the Municipal Code, Chapter 253, Floodplain Ordinance to include the Downtown Floodway Study. Place on file the Building Inspector's Fourth Quarter Report. Approve DNC National Convention Mutual Aid Request. Place on file the December 10th Public Utilities Committee Meeting Minutes. Approve Speed Control on Bayer Drive and Boulder, at Boulder Point Drive. Approve Madison Avenue Wine and Spirits Class B Liquor License. Approve the EMS Performance Review Committee members. Would you uh, pull that, please? The EMS? Yes, M. Um. Approve the 2020 Council Meeting Schedule and approve the 2020 Fee Schedule. Could we, <clears throat> could we also pull item D? Oh, can I make one, one clarification? Just on the Madison Avenue Wine and Spirits, it's a Class B beer. Oh. And a also a clarification on C, it says as listed on the issue sheet. The issue sheet list lists Jack Marcy, but it shouldn't be Jack Marcy. It should be just Cheyenne G. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then I've, I've got a question about N. I thought we had approved the 2020 council meeting schedule um, sometime last year. I couldn't Last find year? it. I looked through okay. it. I didn't find it. So I figured, let's just make no, sure we, we get did. it done. I just want to make sure there weren't any it changes. It hasn't changed. I, <laughs> I looked through the minutes. I didn't see when it happened. So I, I figured. It was when was it? I couldn't remember when it was. So so I, before I got here, that yeah. seems pretty yeah. early to approve okay. it. So I we, usually we, approve in the first meeting We in can January, approve it again. So, <laughs> so we're double approving it. Move to approve consent with changes. Second. Okay. So motion is second to approve consent. With the exceptions of items D and M and amending the issue sheet. L, class B beer. And L. Yeah, C class B beer. And class B yep. beer. All right, everybody got that? Move to uh, approve. Roll call. Morissette? Yes. Alms? Yes. Diziel? Yes. Weber? Yes. Atkins Hoggart? Yes. Paul? Yes. All right, motion's approved. Uh, item D. <laughs> Um, I had two comments on that because we've we spent quite a bit of time at the uh, Public Works Committee reviewing this <laughs> process and looking at the things that worked and didn't work and uh, had really good input. But there are two concerns that I have and one is uh, I am not yet comfortable with the pedestrian approaches that are going that need to happen so we need to make sure that that is part of this what's going to happen along both sides of Vine Street um, uh, particularly from uh, uh, the, uh, the Atkins uh, project uh, and also it was brought up it was almost a side comment but as I think about it at Diamond Drive which is YMCA entrance uh, we put these pedestrian signs in and they flash for the Vine Street people and those cars stop and then the people in the YMCA or on Diamond Drive say we can go now <laughs> so we need to take a look at, at how are we going to let them know they don't know that they can't I mean they say oh traffic stop man I'm going you know so and that happens frequently because so I, I think we need to look at how uh, how that should be managed and uh, how do we warn them that they can't go either Jim so, we did talk about that at public safety and Mike wanted to are you talking the Hawkeye system or just knowing in general just just the current system we have you know, which is not the Hawkeye system. No, no, and then the Hawkeye system would cause the same problem you're, you're identifying. Well, certainly, certainly. And that's why I, I think I even said tongue-in-cheek at uh, putting stop lights there on both the whole Yeah, the whole I works. think that's, that's why they say the Hawkeye system really works in the mid its middle of the block. Uh, that's the, the primary application for that. But then you have the engineer telling us, no, that doesn't work like that. So <laughs> We can also do the flashing. On all, I mean, basically, anybody that activates it can activate flashing on all four. 
so it's facing all all directions so nobody goes and that's a that's an easy solution to something yeah. like that is you, yeah. no matter which direction you're going if you hit the flasher it activates all the streets so that way the people thinking that oh they're stopped i'm gonna quick whip out don't whip out and hit a kid so yeah yeah we and i think that's true anywhere we install that system we need to be thinking yeah. about what's yeah. that cross traffic there's your engineer <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to restrain myself, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dean Chamberlain, city engineer. Um, I uh, definitely see your point where it's uh, those the turning vehicles are a, a big problem, especially with <clears throat> excuse me an intersection that has a lot of turning vehicles like Diamond Drive does. Um, I uh, but when we were talking about the Hawk system before at the public safety meeting and. Um, with that system, there really isn't a way to direct, because it's an actual traffic signal, there isn't really a way to direct heads towards the side streets with the RFP system. Um, there is ways that you can mount uh, additional flashing pads because they're not an actual traffic signal or a warning device. Um, so uh, there could be some thought, more thought put into how to orient those. Um, the problem if you put them at all the legs of the intersection is when somebody hits the button and it activates those are only supposed to activate for the crossing that's being crossed or else it's kind of a uh, your warning for something that's not happening uh, across like say if if you push the button and flashers light up everywhere <laughs> you know uh, people might think that people are or being warned that people are crossing, say, like Diamond Drive instead of Vine Street, where they're actually crossing. And so there's a lot more information being communicated that might actually be true. Uh, so it's just uh, something uh, that we should consider more, uh, especially if we end up getting that grant to put in the, um, the crossing islands and stuff like that. Um, that would be something that we would design into that project uh, if and when we get that. So it's just just some some warning things to before we you know go crazy on saying I want flashers on all legs and stuff. So no, I was I'm just saying yep. that needs, <laughs> that needs to be specifically addressed because yep. it's a significant problem at that intersection. Certainly, yep. Mm -hmm. At what point do we look at stoplights at that intersection? I don't know. That's <laughs> that's beyond <laughs> this conversation. Don't ask him. Well, nobody has officially looked at stoplights at intersections, uh, as far as I know. Um, it's uh, something that we can pursue. I don't think it will officially meet traffic signal warrants there. Um, that's just my, you know, gut feeling uh, with with that. But um, if that's something council directs us to do, we can look at it further. But um, yeah, this is my my thought as of right now. I, I would think that our direction is figure out how to make that a safe pedestrian crossing and, and more effective. And if it's and you come back and say here's the if it's if it's traffic signals, then that's mm -hmm. the that's the answer we're looking for. Mm -hmm. But that's what we want. Okay, that's that's what I want. <laughs> okay. I'll speak to myself. All right. The car counts don't justify it right now. Right. But mm. I I could care less if we think it's benefits the safety of our <clears throat> citizens that's what we do you know I, I know you have the job in your uniform manual of engineering whatever but <laughs> so what agree just the best solution right all right that's what we want sorry so i also sorry. have a sorry Dean. <laughs> <laughs> no i mean we're not taking action on that tonight right so <laughs> i would think though that if we're gonna Go with that route. That would be something that we would want to get direction, official direction from you to actually study, and then also, you know, mm -hmm. go through the process of coming up with, a, you know, looking at alternatives and all. Well, that I think you have the direction that we want the best answer possible there for safety. So, right. however yeah. that works as we continue through this, let's do that though, and bring it back to the council <laughs> so we can keep talking about it. And well, see. most of us have heard very loud and clear from the constituency up there that there is a safety issue, yep. and if we move forward with that development, and I made a commitment to the people publicly to say we're not gonna, I'm not going to support anything without taking care of the safety of our citizens up there I still won't support it and I'll, I'll do what I have to to help try to to stop or slow it down if it doesn't come out to the best interest of getting kids and every pedestrian across the street mm -hmm. I had a process kind of question um, 
it says approve the Vine Street pedestrian safety study. So my question is just <clears throat> what does that constitute if we approve it? Is that saying that, that we? Well, if you want more information or more look at that intersection, then you can postpone it and have them come back and give you something on that issue. Yeah, by approve. The way I look at it is that by approving that Vine Street pedestrian safety study is you support the recommendations made by SEH and your directing staff to pursue those recommendations for installation. Okay. Hence the median islands, the traffic signal at Wisconsin and Vine, possibly looking into that. Um, you know, pushing back some of the pedestrian ramps out of the actual intersections where their pedestrians are crossing the roads and not, you know, not in the intersection. So um, that's what I foresee <coughs> By approving that document tonight, so. But, but it would does be that document address this issue or not? It does look at that intersection. It does. It does recommend, you know, the RFB, the median islands. It doesn't say anything in there about a traffic signal at mm -hmm. Diamond and Vine, specifically. I guess what I'm trying to figure out is how much. Um, I would guess that some of this would have to be approved at a later council meeting. For example, the, the question I have is more the light on Wisconsin and Vine. Yeah. Uh, because when I brought that up with the school district, they were surprised by that. They, they were, they said the original engineering study did not call for that. And so they were confused as to why that changed. So the same, same reason is, is the traffic counts don't warrant a traffic signal at that intersection. However, because of the number of pedestrians that cross at Wisconsin and Vine, that an engineer would sign off on the installation at that intersection. And that's, it's important because whenever you put up a traffic signal, you want to have something warranted because if something were to happen, an accident or so on and so forth, uh, in the courts, what a attorney will ask is why was this traffic signal ever installed here that caused this accident? And if there's no reason why it was installed, liabilities on the city. So that's why it's important to have the warrants from a certified engineer supporting that installation. Got it. So, And I'm not saying I'm, I'm against it nope, or for nope. it. I'm just trying that's to figure out what the change in thinking was. So if we approve it, we're saying we want to go f forward with the recommendations in the study. Yes. Is that correct? But and then, and then at a later... will come back, though, before final approval. That's what I'm saying, because uh, that, that uh, traffic light is fairly yep. hefty in price, so we'd have to figure All out All those things will come that. back later date for approval oh, for okay yeah. thank you i mean this is like the plan but the actual implementation will have to come back in pieces for approval by the council <clears throat> okay it's going to involve the funding and making final decisions on some of the recommendations things like that and we could add jim's your concern yeah. about right in front of why there yeah. we could add that could be added as part of what, future discussions well they know well this is prepared by seh so i mean are you directing them to add to look at that again Jim, do you have thoughts on that? I would say yes. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So we could amend that as part of the approval of the. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I think you could approve this, but then you're also directing our staff yeah. to focus. We have a city engineer. And I think we, we would right. do that. We can house. focus internally, yeah. not have gotcha. to pay SEH more okay. money. That's right. Mm -hmm. Focus yeah. internally and let's get, we'll look closer at that diamond um, behind your section. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Motion? Yes. It's a motion that we direct our staff to pay special attention to the uh, turning traffic at Diamond and the Y. To approve the study and. To. Okay. Yes, right. Second. Motion is second. Discussion? Just to clarify, we are approving the study, correct? Yes. Yeah, correct. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. <clears throat> Item M. Okay. Um, the reason I pulled it is that um, the contract that we've got um, says. Um, all of the committee members shall have sufficient availability, expertise, and breadth of experience necessary to oversee the party's relationships under this agreement. The city and participating municipalities, if any, shall be responsible for establishing the procedure for appointing and removing their respective representatives and establishing terms of service, and if any, consistent with the functions and purpose of this committee as described in this agreement. So my questions are, what are the terms for each of these members and um, um, what are their, what's their experience um, with EMS? Well, so are you talking about this, the citizen? 
Yeah. Yes. I'll, I'll speak the terms. We didn't really pick terms because we just weren't sure at this point. We just figured there'll be annual appointments. Um, we'll just put people yeah, annually. We'll review with all our appointments, and we may reappoint or kind of have somebody else if they roll off. But I wasn't thinking really terms on a committee like this. Okay. But um, that can be changed. That was just my opinion. Was it's an annual appointment? Oh, okay. Well, that wasn't clear in, in no, what no, was it was not. I agree. Here, it wasn't. So, yep. Um, and then, um, so I don't know anything about. So, all right. So, <coughs> Kathy Miller and Ralph Swenson would um, represent the um, the city of Hudson. Do right. they both live in the city? Two, two of three. Yeah. Uh, the third more or less backed out so I still haven't filled that third spot yes they both live in the city okay what are their qualifications well um, they Ralph I can speak to very quickly he is a former uh, uh, North Hudson uh, member council member up there uh, familiar with EMS has watched this issue for some time I think he may have also been a county supervisor and uh, and lives over at Woodland Hills right now. So it's a good place to get representation from over there, without a doubt. Kathy Miller also has been uh, a, a, an advocate for uh, good quality EMS, and she has been following the issues here from day one, and also has had experience with uh, EMS service with her husband. I think he's taken a couple rides. Um, I don't know, I mean, it's beyond that, I don't know what kind of, you know, what. How, how much more qualified somebody can be. Well, it just says that they're supposed to have the um, experience, expertise and breadth of experience necessary to oversee the party's relationship. So um, what does the council <coughs> believe that means? And um, so um, uh, Can I, Joyce, yeah. I, my thoughts on it were we laid out a number of criteria at, at, as part of the contract and how they would be measured and the uh, 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 frequency of meetings and the reporting that would be done. And I would think that would be, that's what this, we're not looking for people who are experts in EMS. We're looking for people who are going to, looking at the management of this operation. Are they performing to the standards that were set? And are, are things, corrective actions being taken when they need to be? That's, it's, just, it's an oversight. To me, it's an oversight. Mm -hmm. we're, not gonna, we're not gonna manage EMS again. No, no, I, I, and, and I'm not expecting that. that. I'm, just, so, I'm just looking at the contract, are we? Yeah, yeah so that's, I think, when you, one of the qualifications, we're looking for people who can actually you know, review this information and act in a business-like manner. So they have some experience with it. EMS, that's, that's great. You know, they have a sense of what it's about. But here are the, here are the criteria that we spent hours pounding out about how we're going to measure this group. Mm -hmm. So measure the performance and provide this service to the city. So that's, I think, what, that's what I would be looking for in the people that, uh, that, that sit on this committee. It's an ability to read, understand the data and have a conversation <laughs> with the, with the uh, director and supervisor. All right, I'll move to approve for one year um, terms. For, uh, and we're only approving um, um, Kathy, Ralph, and Bill because the other ones are, we don't have control over those, is that correct? We don't have control over those, no, but those are the ones that we are saying are on there. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Second. A motion second to approve. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is approved. Uh, lost my place here. The discussion of possible action on request for proposals for the possible redevelopment of 222 Walnut Street, existing fire station, and 221 Commercial. A, yeah. What did I skip for? Oh. Yeah. oh, I'm sorry. That's right. I was thinking we were, I forgot that we were on the consent calendar there. So. Discussion of possible action on resolution 02-20 of the City of Hudson, Wisconsin, authorizing an interfund loan in connection with tax incremental district number six on the St. Croix Street sewer extension project. Thank you. So um, the St. Croix Street Sanitary Sewer Extension Project was awarded and completed this past summer. Um, this, the funding for it was approved to be an interfund loan from the utility department to, um, to the city and that it would be repaid through TID funds. So this, uh, this resolution is, is what uh, 
basically memorializes that arrangement. It repays uh, the utility back a hundred thousand, a little over a hundred thousand dollars at a two and a half percent per year rate. Um, we could have paid it all back this year, but we wanted to make sure that we had some additional increment left in case there was another project uh, that we deemed would be uh, a better use for those funds. Um, so uh, that's that's what's in front of you tonight for approval. And the Public Utilities Commission uh, discussed this and felt that it was probably a good bet to uh, <laughs> loan money to the city. <laughs> Move to suspend the rules. Second. Motion second to suspend the rules. Roll call. Morissette? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Dazeel? Yes. Weber? Yes. Ekin Hogart? Yes. Hall? Yes. Motions approved. Rules is suspended. Move to adopt resolution 02 20. Second. Motion second to adopt. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motions approved. Discussion of possible action on a request for proposal for possible redevelopment of 222 Walnut <coughs> Street, the existing fire station, and 221 Commercial Street, the Williams Public Parking Lot. So this is something, obviously, that's been discussed over the past uh, year or so as to what, uh, now that we have the fire station under under construction up on Ward Avenue and uh, Lakeview is about to occupy their new space up on the hospital campuses, what is the city to do with its existing fire station? Um, this proposal or this request for proposals in front of you for tonight uh, basically says that the city would entertain uh, redevelopment proposals of that site and it can also include the Williams lot as part of, uh, of any proposal. It doesn't have to, but it can. It also establishes criteria in which uh, a proposal would be uh, ranked on. So obviously in the future, a, a committee would need to be established. We'd create a matrix for scoring uh, to make sure that you know whatever proposals receive um, are basically all um, judged on the same criteria um, for what we want. It does not bind or bound the city to any, any proposals. If we get a 30 of them and we don't like any of them, we don't have to move forward with any of them. Uh, but if something you know knocks our socks off and we think it is a, a valuable addition to our, uh, our our wonderful downtown, obviously we can uh, work towards uh, accomplishing that proposal with whatever developer uh, that may be. I'm sure there's questions. <laughs> and going through the process, you know, for any developer, yep. Yep. city process, plan commission, and so forth. And mm -hmm. like the, the due date is April 1st for the. Would yep. You, I mean, obviously, it's going to take some time for somebody to put together. There's a lot of work that goes into it. Obviously, there's a detailed financial performer they have to come up with. They're going to have to do some due diligence, um, the architectural stuff, the engineering, uh, just to at least get something to us um, in a form that we can uh, review. Yep. I guess my question is, is that, does that, does that allow sufficient yeah. time for someone to do that if they're? I think it would, yeah. Okay. When would this get published? Um, so, so then, how much time would they have from the time it's published to the time it's due? Three, three or so months, I think. We'd probably publish next week. Okay. So. Two. Oh, so they'd have two months. Yeah. Two. Two. Is that yep. enough time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you want it, we can move it back to May first too. You know, that's fine. Yeah. I mean. Do you feel as though if we did, is it in your experience that if we did allow an extra month, we might get a few more? I'd like to, to maximize the number that are under consideration. It varies by project, yeah. right? Time, time's good right now. I mean, it's economy strong. You know, there's a lot of interest. You know, I've had a lot of different development groups reach out to me and say, hey, when is, when is this coming out? Is it going to be available? Um, I think there'll be some activity on this one. So, you know, March doesn't include, March is still pretty much winter if people are needing to do any, but I guess since the parking lot's going to be plowed, so right. And, and, and May 1st sounds good too. I mean, yeah. I, I don't it, Split the difference. Yeah, May 1st is hot. Yeah. And then the process after we receive RFPs, does it go to Plan Commission for review? Absolutely. Yeah, so it would still have, we would, uh, we would entertain the proposal to say we like this concept, right? Mm -hmm. And then the developer would move forward and, and work towards and, and go through that approval process. That yeah, we, all, process. all what would happen is, is so when the when the proposals are due, we the council decide on some sort of committee, whoever it would be made up of, 
who knows, but up to the council to review them and rank them. And then once that's done, then that would go back to the full council and say, okay, here's the review and ranking of all these proposals. Do you agree? And if we pick one, basically all we're saying is, is we're electing to move forward with this proposal. That, pro that proposer then would have to prepare all the information and go through all the, doc all the process of the development of planning commission, working on a development agreement with the city, sale of land, all that stuff. So this is potentially a, another subcommittee that's developed then to review. Absolutely. To review it, right. It would be a review committee. And then yep. the, the price, I mean, they're not advertising a price, right? You're asking for proposals with an It could be anything. It could be somebody that's just a cash offer or it could be, you know, somebody that wants to build. I don't want to throw a 60 foot tall building in there or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Try to take both ends of the spectrum here, right? No, it could be, you know, any number of different things. Mm. Gotcha. I'll and move how to long it. do you think it will take once we say yes that you'll get it published? I know you answered that already, but. We could get it to the paper by this Friday. For next week. For yep. next. And we'd have it we'd have it on our website basically tomorrow. Yeah. Right, right. Well I guess I'd like to see a couple more days. a couple more weeks. I'd <laughs> yeah. really, yeah. I would like to maximize the number of proposals that we get. And okay. I think that by pushing that date out a little bit we might get more. Okay. So I don't know, September uh April seventeenth is a Friday or we can go May one is a Friday. I like May one. May Day is a good day. So I'd move to approve with the change to May one for the deadline. Second. We got a motion and a second. Um, I just I just want to toss this out. I'm not wedded to, to this necessarily, but um, I'm a little nervous about doing an RFP for that piece of property right now. And I'm just thinking that maybe we should push that back until we have some more data on our parking needs. So the whole point of uh, I shouldn't say the whole point, but a major point of what we've done with parking was to create churn downtown. And we were hoping that that churn would mitigate some of the problems that we have with congested parking, especially at dinner time, the, the, the most busy time in downtown. And it's quite possible that, um, that we're gonna find that we, we need additional parking and that space seeing as how we own that land, might be the perfect spot to help solve some of our parking problem. I, like I said, I'm not wedded to this, but if I had a vote, I guess I would say, I would vote to postpone this for a while until we get some idea if the parking system is doing what we anticipated it to do. And I think that data comes through with, uh, probably with retail telling us some of the, you know some of their experience as well as we're not getting good experience right now it's winter time i think that we need to have some experience in the summertime as well when tourism again is going to pick up so um that that's just my position i i think that it would be good if we held off for just a little bit on this and again because we may feel that we need that space over there for our own parking needs would would the building remain uh, that would be, you know, at the council's discretion. I, I understand that through an RFP process, anybody that would go over there that, that would be approved for some type of development, we would likely make them pay for scraping that building. Uh, if we were to determine that we were going to use it for parking for our own needs, I guess we would have to pay for that. In the meantime, I don't know that you know, I guess it comes down to maintenance of the building. While it's empty, it's not going to be empty all that long. Uh, it wouldn't be much. We just winter. I mean, basically, just kind of seal it off. Mothball it. Yeah, mothball. I don't want to see Mirage start putting trucks in it. It's garage space. We'll use it. Oh, he's, he's here still. <laughs> it's garage space. We would use it until we got rid of it. So, so, Mr. Mayor, would would it help if? Um, I appreciate the point too, because I, I think that the parking is new and the data does need to come in. So I, I would concur that that's, that's valuable data. So buying time I think is probably a good thing to do. But what I'm trying to figure out is if, if we went forward and just extended the RFP um, when it was due to end of July or something or August, would that give us time to get the data? And also after you have the RFPs, right? 
you don't have to necessarily accept them. You'd have to process them, and so you'd have some several months to keep dealing with that. So would that buy enough time, do you think, to? Well, I, I think it would, as long as the people that, I mean, if, let's, if people here agree with me that we may need that for our own parking needs, then it, as long as when we do the RFP, it's with the understanding to anybody that might be submitting a proposal that we may not accept any of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that we may actually decide to use it ourselves. Isn't it but been, it does make it pretty I'm sorry. Hasn't it been very clear that, yeah, we do need it for parking? It says, I mean, in the RFP itself, it, you know, the incorporation of additional public parking, it talks about a significant, to find it. You know, it talks about, you know, we want to have, uh, enhance the inventory and availability of public parking downtown while expanding the tax base and job creation. Mm -hmm. Worried about losing control of it? No, well, yes and no. I mean, enhance, it's different than, I mean, if we were to, to take that lot, for example, I think what, we have 40 some spaces over there right now. Is that right? Well, uh, a little bit more. If you take Williams lot, 50-ish, 52, I wanna say, somewhere in that range. Six, Somewhere in there, the 50 to the 65 range. <laughs> <laughs> a, if it snows, it's less. <laughs> if, um, and and when, when the fire department and EMS move out of there, we do pick up additional parking that's currently used for, for their vehicles and for turnaround and things like that. I don't know how many spots, maybe 15, Quite 20. Quite a few. Ish, yeah. Uh, so that would help for a little while, but and then if you figure that building is down, we pick up maybe a total of another 40? Yeah, I think we can't quite double, but get close to what our current inventory is. With and the surface lot. With the surface lot. With the surface lot. lot. Yeah. And then if we were to entertain the notion of putting a deck on that, we double that. And, you know, that goes a long way, I think, to resolve some of our problems downtown. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm all for developing that. As long as we can, I, I think I've been real clear about this, my position on any building that we're going to do on our lots, that a developer is going to have to give us parking spaces double has been what we're telling people, uh, double what we would already have, and we can't lose any. So, but I mean, if we were to entertain a notion like that, uh, based upon any data that we get back, I mean, if the data comes back, look, if the data comes back the way we hope it will, that that our system is creating the churn downtown that we were hoping it would do, it would create. I don't see a problem, you know. But if it doesn't, and and that's just it. I'm just kind of hedging my bet on this. Mm -hmm. you know? I guess I would ask the question maybe of, of Randy and and Mary Claire. When do you guys expect to have data that? That. Next Tuesday, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that tells you how successful. You know, I, 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 you know, I, I think comments. he's looking for summer. In a busy yeah, you yeah, know, this is our first full full month of enforcement. Right. Yeah, that's you know, of real enforcement. So, I mean, it's going to take some time, I think, and then summer is going to paint an entirely. I anticipate will paint an entirely different picture than what we're seeing and hearing now. Yeah. Is there a downside from your perspective, Mike, from the interest in postponing this? Or extending it to September. That's a loaded question. <laughs> um, <laughs> to crystal ball out. <laughs> I, 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 I would anticipate the level of interest would be the same. The only thing that I think about a little bit would be, you know, it, it might be a positive with uh, the Highway 35 <coughs> reconstruct, the Main Street reconstruct in 2021. Maybe somebody's going to want to couple their project with that. Or maybe they're going to say, I don't want anything to do with that project in 2021. You know, maybe I'll construct in 22. Um, if I don't want to predict, pick, predict the economy, you know, anything could happen. But I, I don't think it would have a significant enough. I would think that 4th of July booster days, we get through that. I think that's going to be the height of, of our, of our uh, parking issues down there, you know, and, and congestion, whatever, uh, tourism. So if we if we're thinking about May, just add another couple months, June, July. Actually, I think I'd like to. Now that I'm listening to our conversation, I think um, I think the further out is the better. Mm -hmm. I uh, with the comp plan coming, and I'm I'm 
very opposed to selling property until that comprehensive mm -hmm. plan can look at all the things the city owns and what are we going to do with them let's really take a look and um, same thing with the Wells Fargo lot where I said you know it's just not right to sell city land right now while we're I mean we're so fortunate that we're at the 2020 mark where the comp plan is getting attention right now that it might be fortuitous fortuitous of us to hold off let that process unfold maybe not completely but at least a bit and that we are opening up the possibilities for the comp plan not you know taking pulling in and saying nope well this isn't going to be possible anymore because we decided already we're going to do this and this yep. isn't going to be possible so i'd like to um just like say that uh how do i take back a motion withdraw <laughs> Mr. Draw. i'm going to withdraw my motion please mm -hmm. so then if we're if we're still in agreement that we should look at i mean we should still do an rfp just later do we want to set an rfp date for like september one and then because my only worry and it's not necessarily worry but economy wise <laughs> Election years are interesting, and a new president, <laughs> and a new president potentially, or a continuation of a president potentially, can have impacts on mm -hmm. market. And other. I would like to see us if we're going to do something. Let's get that kind of wrapped up this year. If okay, we're going to so, if we're going to sell that land or something. So I think if we can say like a September due date, we're still looking at approval <laughs> of a proposal. Hopefully November one, something like that. And that would time out well because our public meeting for downtown and the comp plan process is May, yeah. early May. Okay, so I'll I'll move to accept the uh, to direct staff to put out the RFP with a due date of September one. I think that's about right. Uh, a little I just want to see what day week that is. I'm kind of weird about that. Is that too late for you, Mike? You think? I <laughs> I, I don't think so. The process that we have <laughs> after mm -hmm. accept the RFP. There's a yeah. mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. process. Plus, you may Six, depending on data. I think that'd be good. You may change your criteria. You get more well, we would yeah. We probably won't issue at this so, point. Yeah. I mean, if it's a no, September, good with August. if it's a September one or August one, whatever we decide. We'll probably throw it out there about three, four months before. Yeah. We're not going to do it today. today. Oh, it's right. August. Is August good? Yeah, because I, yeah, because I think if August won, it's still going to take us sixty days to review and get a recommendation. By that time, we'll have all the parking data in, and we'll mm -hmm. we'll know more by then. But that'll give us a little more stretch before the end of the year. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. July thirty first, Friday. Friday, July thirty first. Okay. <clears throat> second. Motion a second. Further discussion. I have a question, not about that, but germane to it. Do we direct city staff to come up with a proposal to us keeping the property, razzing the building, and restructuring the parking in-house? We can do that. It's not hard to do. Uh, we have an engineer now. Well, <laughs> I don't have a I don't have a structural engineer. We have a civil. We can we can ballpark some things. I mean, I got yeah. That. Well, yeah, I don't well, know you if can you do want it. that with it, but what are you doing, Randy? What so you want it raised now? If we're going to keep it, tear it down, well, if, resurface if, a lot. But you want to do that now? For instant parking no. during After, the RFP process. Well, no, just to see. You want to see options. Options. an option? What our option would be to keep it. I see. Okay, mm -hmm. sure. Should we do that before Ancillary putting to things the, out to, uh, for RFP? So I that, think you do yeah. them concurrently. <laughs> well, do so it. the issue is we always have that option. We always have the option to do whatever we want over right. there until we don't, and that's when we sell it. Up until that point, we have it's always our choice whatever we want to do with it. And so even as if we're getting proposals, if, if our staff puts together, okay, so you're going to get these proposals in. If you don't want, find one that you love, here's what it'll cost you to turn that into a parking lot, surface level lot. Yep. Anything above surface level lot, we'd have to probably talk about. I'm just it. talking yep. surface, yep. just the bare minimum yep. to add that. So we can, we can figure that out. So then the council can weigh that as the other option into this whole thing is that, okay, we got 10 proposals. Yeah. We're not wed to one of them, really. No, nothing overwhelms us. Well, why don't we then instead turn it into the surface lot? Here's how much it'll cost us. Come back next year, try again, do something else, whatever. You know, so I we'll think come back. Fine. We'll need to do some probably topo and... We I'll can figure it out. out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. It'll be. Mike can do it. Would yeah, that's all. I'll those, do it. Yeah. <laughs> would those costs be eligible for tax increment um, mm -hmm. money? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. All right. We'll add that to there. Yep. All right. No, that, that's okay. Adding that to the motion. You good with that? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Good mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Further discussion. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. Uh, discussion and possible action on free three-hour parking for seniors 65 and over from the city of uh, residents of the city of Hudson. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Well, that's one yes. Well. I want to move to uh, for discussion purposes second. on this one. Oh, sure. Yeah, okay. Motion is second. Uh, all right, so I, I'm bringing this forward, and here's why. I wish I wish I could say this was my idea, but it's not. Uh, this came from seniors that I talked with that were relating to me their frustrations with our system, and I know that everybody is, is I presume everyone here has gotten some feedback, some frustrations, different things that that uh, that are happening. But in this case, this is this this is different, I think, because we've got seniors right now, especially in the winter time that, um, number one, don't have the phone. They don't have, uh, even if they have a smartphone, they may not know how to get that app, and I've heard that from people. Most of the people I've talked to say they don't even have a smartphone, don't care to get one. And so they're happy to hear that they can still use quarters, but then they have to walk up half a block, perhaps, to a station, icy sidewalk, snowy sidewalk. They get there, realize, they need their license plate number or knew that before but forgot that they needed their license plate number and uh, or forgot their license plate number walk back to their car get their license plate number walk back to the station meanwhile in. they've gotten a ticket yeah. <laughs> <laughs> another frustration I guess and uh, and so it was it was suggested to me that we do 70 plus but I thought that's rather arbitrary I think for the reasons that were expressed to me and that I'm relating here I think to go to 65 makes a lot of sense also just to realize I think it's a nice benefit for people that have uh, have contributed to our community for a long time you know it's it's frustrating for them the real reason is that it's frustrating and difficult for them to work through and I've heard people say I'm not even going to go down downtown anymore and I was with a group of people on Friday and and some of them said I don't really care to get an app and I'm frustrated with the system I'm not going to go down there uh, and that is more of an age related thing than anything so for those reasons I'd really like to see this I think it'd be a good thing for us to do. Kathy, would we need to change the ordinance in order to do that since all the fees are in the ordinance? Are the fees for the new system in the ordinance? I or believe just, so. Um, Were they by ordinance? Well, there let me, I'd like to I don't know. Let, me, let me explain something. I, I had, I, obviously there were a couple, couple concerns. Number one was implementation. Could we do this? Mm -hmm. and how would it be implemented mm -hmm. I had a discussion with the chief on this and uh, I've talked to Aaron about it and uh, they said that it would be treated could be treated the same as a permit so the seniors would come down they would fill out a form register their license plate number and uh, well, look maybe I'm misspeaking because the chief is <laughs> coming <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, the license plates would be registered they would be on a list for the for the uh, readers that go by our, our uh, meter readers that go by would recognize that this license plate is on a list that essentially would be considered a parking permit yep. so um, it would be um, an honor system as far as making sh so if if the senior um, loaned their car to their um, grandchild, <laughs> then how would that uh, affect? It would, it would technically be like an honor system, basically. Okay. Yes. So like a right. handicap plate. Yep. There, yeah. Exactly. The handicap okay. plate, something like that. There's well, no way around that. That's could, a potential. And if you get caught, there could be you know forfeiture. Yeah. Right. So you then that would have to put into an or ordinance. Yeah, we'll look at what's in the ordinance. We'll look to see now how the ordinance is structured and the fees are structured. I would say tonight, if you can, if you're interested and you approve it, we'll figure out how to implement it. Then we may have to come back with the ordinance change. I'm not sure what if the fees are actually in the ordinance or not, but okay. we'll we'll verify how it's laid out. A couple of questions, playing devil's advocate. Uh, we we are we discriminating against Bill's age group? Are we discriminating? Are we? Are we? <laughs> are we 
Are we opening up policies when we can start picking and choosing which group gets this, that, or the other thing? I don't think it's prohibited discrimination. You're discriminating in favor of a group of people for reasons that you've stated, rational reasons. They have difficulty using the system. They have uh, difficulty navigating the street and sidewalk and snow and ice. And so it's it's not, uh, it's more a benefit rather than a discrimination and you're doing it for rational so reasons. So John Smith comes in, the John Smith groups. Yep. What do we tell them? No, we can't. Well, it's similar to other business entities giving military discounts or senior discounts. I did uh, have a conversation with the league about it, and they can't find anything directly on it except to the extent that um, it's, it's not prohibited. You're not depriving someone of their employment. You're treating them more fav favorably for rational reasons. And if you have a handicap sticker in your window, you are qualified to park anywhere? Is that it for state statute? Uh, I don't know if it's anywhere. It's in designated, it's I mean, statute. I'm just, uh, it's designated parking spots as far as I know. It's, it's in statute, but you can park well, anywhere. I'm not saying oh, anywhere, really? but yeah. Okay. Yep. It is anywhere. Right. Any legal spot is what Any it, legal parking spot. <laughs> Can't park in front of a fire hydrant. <laughs> well, right. But, but any don't open have to just be spot. designated? No. Okay. But you have to be the one with the disability to have the privilege of the handicap placard. You mean you right. So if your if your elderly mom has a placard, I'll tell her you said that. I'm just saying. <laughs> right? If your elderly uncle, whatever, has, <laughs> has, has, a, has, has a handicap and they have been issued a placard, and you're driving their car and they're not in there, unless you have a, a disability, you can't use the benefit of that placard. Mm -hmm. To, to, yeah, to minimize right. abuse. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, yes, yeah, you have a handicap sticker, a license plate, or placard, you can park in any legal parking spot. So, but um, senior citizens don't have the handicap just because they're senior citizens, right? So, no, right. I mean, that's a different, that's, that's a really a different, different topic. Question. That was a different right. question. So, another um, devil's advocate, so I've got um, my sister-in-law living with me now, and she doesn't drive. So I don't have a car for her, but she has a car. I suppose I could put theirs on the thing, but what if I'm the driver and the elderly person is a passenger? Do I get the benefit of free parking because she's in my car? It's, no. 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 You're, you're there, you're capable, and <laughs> so you're able to either walk to the, the kiosk and pay or use your app and pay. So it, it's basically set up for the senior drivers and their vehicles. Okay. So how much, is there any kind of an estimate on how much um, in parking fees we would be? Uh, we would have no way. There's no way to know. I wouldn't No way to know who's I mean, at this point, the best we could say is that, well, we have January, we didn't do this, and now we'll have, if we approve it, we'll have February, we did, and we can compare the two and see if there's a big difference. I mean, there's so many other variables, but we can at least see if there's a difference of I think you, you, you'd probably also get an idea based upon the number of people that register their plate. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, if you get 100 people register your plate, that's assumption then that, you know, maybe there's $100 or so a month. I mean, buck fifty for three hours, how many times are we going down there? That sort of thing. I, I would not expect there to be a large revenue loss. Okay. To the no, system. I wouldn't expect that either. No. And again, the process is they would have to come down here to City Hall, fill out an application. Yes, or, or online or... On an annual or, basis or... Yeah. I don't know what our system would allow, but I'm, I'm thinking that... Um, it's probably be set up similar to the permit system where... It would be an... I, I would think it would be an annual, annual yeah. thing, yep. Because also at the same time, we want to verify that that car didn't get sold with that license plate to somebody else, and, yeah. you know, so that way we roll it off. So it would be an annual renewal, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Are we setting, I mean, do other communities have this type of, have you seen anything? In my experience, yes. I have definitely seen that with downtown parking concerns where you do have exemptions for seniors, things like that. Yep, not uncommon. Has, has this idea um, been, you know, passed on through the 
procedures and their processes of going through you know, the committee to try to get their feedback or maybe have we sought any input from downtown businesses, the restaurants and retail that these people would be visiting to see if they think that, you know, I guess the variables, variables would be is three hours the right amount of time, um, three free or... Mary Claire is uh, here. <laughs> we have not sent it through anyone, but as far as the committee goes too, I don't know that we have an active committee that reviews parking right now? It, it is out of public safety. It's an ad hoc, which she chairs. But that was something, I, from my understanding, was that was to set the system up. But I didn't well, know it's that. it's been long standing even before. Policy-wise and things, are we sending things that way? I, I guess I wasn't quite sure about uh, that. What do you mean, what's sending what? Well, like, like something like this, I, you know. Territory for the parking committee it is yeah and that's why development has kind of taken the lead as a staff sure. point of contact yeah which makes sense. like we are we met regularly when we put the system in and yeah. now we're meeting again to get some next week next week some numbers and find out what we're doing it's going <laughs> to be a long wrong and we're obviously right <laughs> what's the function of that ad hoc is it advisory is it yeah, and i don't know it, i it was established in like 01. It was an advisory and then public safety would take it and move it to council as a process. Okay. Yeah. And that's how it's always been, right? Kathy? It would have to be advisory. Yeah. yeah. And that's the way it's functioned. I mean, just on the system of the council. And it really, it kind of included, it used to fill the room, Mary Claire, right? Uh, with people and then it just dwindled and fell apart and then it got resurfaced again. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. More participation. That's good, though, because we can work through our kinks. Change is hard. <laughs> it's uncomfortable, but we have to be patient and make these things work, and it's up to us to figure out the problems. I guess I'd like to acknowledge the many complaints that I've gotten from visitors and business owners and residents and library users and I mean the list is pretty long but the complaints I've been fielding and I think our new system you know if you look at it as a bucket it has a lot of holes in it and we definitely need to patch it um, I my hesitancy my only hesitancy of course I think that senior citizens should get a little special treatment particularly in winters um, that, that's you know that's besides the point. But do we want to piecemeal all these problems and you know let's let's fix this problem here and that problem here and this problem here? Or do we want just a group of people to really really field all these complaints and put them into one big holistic approach to to changing our parking system for the better? Um, I don't know if any of you council members um, are on Hudson word of mouth, mm -hmm. but there are literally hundreds, if not a thousand, comments about how terrible our new system is. Thirty-seven. No, there's more than that. A thousand. It's only a hundred. If you add up all, if you add up all the comments from all the lead ones, there's yeah you know, some yeah well okay somewhere between five hundred and a thousand. There's a lot of um, and their their points are well made. Mm -hmm. and, you know th these aren't just people that are angry and upset <coughs> they're they have real real issues that that have surfaced with our new system so i'm i'm more uh, of the approach that you know this is not the table to make a a one one-off decision on each little item that we see that there's a problem in hudson that we should send it to a group of people that need to look at the big picture and, and include uh, the chamber and include the downtown businesses who is impacts the most I so, do, I do want to, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, sorry, do you mind? Go ahead. I do want to balance the Facebook group piece of it. Um, I'm kind of old school when it comes to this. I don't really look at Facebook as a policy driver. I have, uh, while I've seen some of the Facebook posts, I've not received one phone call, not one email from a constituent. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would just throw that out there just to, for the record. I've, I've gotten many, but maybe it's because my district is here. Mm -hmm. Yep. I would I would say that <clears throat> this isn't uh, uh, certainly as I said earlier we recognize that we've run into some problems with uh, with the system and kinks get worked out and call them holes if you will 
Um, I have confidence and faith that our group is going to be able to get that worked out. What I'm bringing forward here is not about a problem. This is about policy, and I think it's good policy. And so this isn't piecemeal. This is about a policy that I think is important and I think is right and justified for uh, senior citizens of our community. So while I fully understand what you're talking about, I, I think that this is a little bit different. I think it's a lot different because we're talking about a, a, a broad policy that takes good care of a, a good portion of our citizenry. So anybody else? So as I'm listening, I'm I'm hearing what you're saying. I think there's a lot of rumblings, whether they're coming to us or not. Um, I think there's issues we need to look at. On the other hand, we don't have much data, right, because we're just starting it. What I'm thinking about, uh, and Chief maybe can help me with this, is um, would there be a way we could have a permit application process where somebody could apply for a parking permit? So if they're a senior, for example, maybe they get a super cheap parking permit. It's for like the year or something like that. Somebody else who's a downtown employee can could uh, get a apply for a permit under a different category or something like that. I guess my question on technology is: Do we have the technology where, um, if you have all these, say there was a list of like all these permits already processed, right? So you come up to this vehicle and you enter the license number; it somehow matches that. Would there be a way to um, Would there be a way to count the usage? of that vehicle uh, what I'm trying to ask is, is how many times that vehicle has been scanned correct. downtown correct. So to speak. Uh, we are looking into that right now we're looking into um, the ability to run a report to see if there are have been how many first-time users right like in a month right. versus two-time users three-time users right. so on and so forth to see if um, well, basically for an enforcement right. perspective, I, right, to see if if 75% of our users are first-time users, maybe we need to focus more heavily on education um, versus if 75% of our users are multiple-time users every month, then maybe, you know, we focus more heavily on enforcement, you know? So we have looked at it from that perspective. So here's what I'm trying to if get. If it's possible, we don't even know that it's right. possible yet because there's right. three different companies involved that would have to right. all have something that talks to here's each other. Here's what I'm envisioning, and I don't know if this is possible. What I'm envisioning is I go down to City Hall on January 1st and I buy 25 parking passes on my permit all at once. I don't have to plug a meter. I don't have to get an app. I can use them. The question is, can we... So once I use those, is there a way that we could track that is what I'm trying to say. So like a senior citizen, could, you could buy like a whole year, you could buy 50, you could buy, I mean, I think there, there'd be a way that you could, if you did it by permit ahead of time, I think part of it's the anxiety of going down and looking for the stations. People don't know where they are. There's anxiety with the app. Some of the quarters don't work. I'm just saying if you could take care of all that ahead of time, I would much rather just purchase a a permit for the year. So are you saying when you purchase a permit, it's only good for so many uses? Yeah, I could. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out is if we could track that um, or if we could just do a yearly permit maybe too. I, I don't know the technology well enough to know how that would work. It's, it's I think annual, the concern with the yearly annual, permit, right? I think it would have to be by use if you if we could do something like that because the yearly permit, the point of all this is to con to right. encourage that turnover. Right. So if you get like somebody that works downtown and they get that yearly permit, they might park right in front of somebody's business every day, all day, and that's then defeating that point of the three-hour right. limit and turnover. So I think it would have to be you purchased – X number of three hour blocks or something like that. That's what I mean. And so, I don't know if the system to do that, but we could, right. we could look you, at it. If you could like look that. into it, I think that would um, be, I think that would be a great way to go for, and you could adjust then those permits to people who work downtown or by age or by, well, if there's students at the FIPS, for But you for recognize example, that you we could, do have that. long term, lo longer hour parking lots, the eight hour lots where you can purchase it. If you're a downtown employee, you right. can purchase a permit there. And that's the point of those lots is we want the downtown employees parking in these eight hour lots right so they're not parking right in front of the businesses and if you're a city resident you can get a permit I, right and i have to park in a certain permit lot so you can't get a permit and park right in front of the front door of pier five no i get that but i know there was like pizza delivery people that were really concerned because they have to come back and pick a pizza up and then they have to go so they're not going to park in an eight hour lot but they don't want to plug a, a meter every time or a station every time they go so i'm just saying 
if we came up with an idea of a permit system that was more like you could buy it all at once. Some blocks at times. Yeah, we could look think, at some I options. I think it might be, I think it would alleviate a lot of people's anxiety about going downtown. Well, we could look at some options for that, I think. We could try to figure that out. Mm -hmm. All right. We got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? What, we, what was the who motion? Was the motion and what where was the motion? We motioned to approve, or oh. Mr. Morris, I motion. Okay. Yes, sir. I guess I would just like to say. What was your um, motion? <laughs> I move that we approve it and discuss it. So it was an approval, but I wanted to talk these questions out. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, to Paul's point, then I would just say I think before directing city staff to look into that, wouldn't we send that to committee and have them kind of vet some of that before we put staff hours against it? It might not. That's part of the program. Well, for what Paul's talking about with this, with these blocks, that's something where staff has to be able to talk to the to the vendor and just find out is this oh, even an option. Okay. And I think you're right. I mean, I think some of these things are gonna, when you're starting to talk big overall picture changes of how we operate the system, I do think we're gonna start bouncing things down and then back up and then to the council. Um, you know, if you're gonna talk about it, should we start offering where you can buy a 30-hour block of time? something like that and then when you park we'll go by and scan it and there goes three hours every time we touch your car a three-hour block goes away from your thing mm -hmm. but we have to find out if that's a possibility even mm -hmm. okay. so i think those sort of things definitely probably should start rotating through at some point where you're talking kind of this fundamental this process change. change is, is what i'm approving yeah. what i agree with to approve yeah. my motion but i think really the the parking committee on january 28th it's really going to be the start of learning what we need to fix and and listen to the public find out some numbers and, and move forward that way with all the partners that need to be involved that's the plan and, and it's common themes right mm -hmm. uh, you know a conversation that we've had there's the same four or five right. reoccurring themes right let's try and take care of those as best we can so if we approve your motion Randy what are we approving? You're approving the policy change of allowing 65 and older to come down here and have a get a permit and they can park for free. So that would immediately start a the permit process and people would be able to so those, come well, down here. Well, we look at what the ordinance says. Yeah, depending, if, if, depending on how we're, we structure our fees, if we have to make an amendment to the ordinance, it would have to come back for the ordinance process. So, but if we don't, and if, if it's not in ordinance, we would start it as soon as we can implement it, basically. So okay. we'd have to have time to get the application put together, stuff like that. So it'd be a you know, few weeks or so out. If it's an ordinance, then it would come back to the next council meeting as an ordinance change. And then after that, we'd implement. Mm -hmm. So this kind of depends on if it, we have to come back or not. But we'll get it going one way or the other. It's a good start, I think. <coughs> Just my opinion. Anything else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Uh, the next item, approve Martin Luther King Jr. Day as an official city holiday. So, you know, I, I, there, I have a, a lot of emotions, a lot of thoughts about this. Uh, this came up when uh, Aaron and I were talking about the agenda, and, uh, and Aaron had pointed out that we are going to be uh, working on Martin Luther King Day. And it, it hadn't registered with me that our meeting was that same day. Um, frankly, I was a little embarrassed by that, that we have not addressed this. And this isn't something new to me. This is something that's very dear to me. In fact, when I served in the Minnesota legislature, I was the original author of the uh, Martin Luther King holiday for the state of Minnesota. And uh, I, I, I'm, like I said, I'm embarrassed that I, I hadn't even thought about trying to do something like that until Aaron brought it up that we were meeting on Martin Luther King Day. Uh, this is a great time for us to acknowledge a person who I believe to be uh, the fiercest, greatest advocate for civil rights and human rights in modern history. And I think it's a great way for us to acknowledge that. Uh, it seems to me that holidays, of late, the meaning of holidays gets lost. It's just, I've got time off, but not this one. There's a lot of activity out there going on everywhere that our folks could participate in. Perhaps we could even start something here. 
Uh, mm -hmm. But this is a meaningful holiday where most of the holidays have lost their meaning. And so I would like to see us move forward in this direction. I think this is a great thing to do. Uh, Ronald Reagan signed the bill originally in 1983, uh, advocating for or, or putting in place a federal law for uh, recognizing Martin Luther King uh, Day as the third Monday in January. It was first implemented in 1986 and all 50 states have since recognized that and I and I really think uh, it's a good thing for Hudson to step up and, and do the same thing and declare this a holiday. I'll move to approve. Second. I have a motion second to approve any discussion. With pay, or is, do you want to put it in the official handbook or however you want to do Yeah, it? we would add it to the, we'll, we'll add it to the basically a personnel policy that it becomes the 11th city holiday. Okay. Do other cities recognize it? There, That's my only other question. In Minnesota, it's required that it has to be recognized and all cities are closed. Um, in Wisconsin, it's not required for cities, but all state mm -hmm. agencies are closed. So it's up to each city, and when I did a quick survey, it seems like a majority do recognize it. Not everyone, but a majority do recognize it. I know the technical colleges don't. I mean, the WITC and CVTC do not. The um, school system does not either, but they dedicate the day to uh, education and discussion about mm -hmm. Martin Luther King and civil rights. Even better. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, right. Even better yeah. is right. <clears throat> what was that? It's even, it's even better. better. Yeah. I appreciate you bringing this to council, and I appreciate your history, and um, I could not agree with you more. It's right. very, very important, so. Yeah. Good, thank you. Any um, other discussion? Well, you know, I certainly appreciate Dr. King's work and um, want to honor uh, him. I'm just wondering, have, mm -hmm. would there, Aaron, would there be any problems with workflow or anything like that by having another holiday? No, I mean, honestly, clearly we'll always have some employees that work on holidays, but mm -hmm. the way our contracts and agreements, either union agreements are set up or our personnel policy is set up, um, it won't like affect overtime or anything like that. We don't, we don't structure it that way. Um, you know, our police officers have to work on holidays. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the reality of it. And so with that, within our agreement, we have a different structure for them. So if they work on a holiday, they don't get overtime. It's just our structure, the way we have it set up to address that issue. So by adding a holiday, it doesn't affect any, it will cost, it won't cost us extra for those employees that have to work. Obviously it's a day off for others, right. but I'm not concerned about the workflow situation for this one. No, I don't think that'll be an issue. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. <laughs> Uh, I don't have anything uh, for future agendas. Anybody? Anything? No? Okay. Uh, discussion of possible action to convene into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.85 sub 1 sub C to consider performance evaluation date and compensation relating to the city administrator. Move to go into closed session. Second. second. Motion second to go into closed session. Roll call. Morissette? Yes. Alms? Yes. Bazio? Yes. Weber? Yes. Atkins Haugert? Yes. Hall? Yes. Motion's approved. We are in closed session. We'll step across the hall.
Who's back there? The Braden? We good? All right. <laughs> so, Mr. Mayor, we uh, have done a performance review of Aaron Reeves, our new city administrator, after the 90 days as required by city policy. And we have found his performance to be exemplary. He is, uh, per, he's passed the satisfactory performance review. Um, Aaron, we really like your work. We really appreciate what you're doing for the city. At this point, I would like to make a motion uh, to move uh, him to the step three of the pay scale for the city of Hudson, and that that would be retroactive uh, to January 1st of 2020. Second. second. Got a motion and second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Appreciate Thank you. Move, move to, to adjourn. adjourn. Second. The motion is second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. We stand adjourned. Thanks, everybody.